All right, buddy, welcome in. Latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Mike Brad. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm joined as always by my cousin Shane, who goes by Big Orange Vowels on Twitter. What's up, yo, Tazy Hober? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, man, I just, <laughs> I hope they can hear us. I hope they can see us. I, I literally don't know if they can. Yeah, probably not, Mike. You know, they, they got us for about 15 minutes. Uh, I, I thought that was funny. You know, I made a joke on the show yesterday uh, about Tenacious D and the tribute. And then we tried to upload all this stuff. It was like one thing, one hurdle after another. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, we've got a, now we've got a few more fail safes in the background just in case that happens. But, but brother, I'm doing good. First day of spring. Spring is in the air, even though it's 30 degrees outside. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it, it just it feels like maybe it was a day early because I didn't think it's going to warm up tomorrow. Right, right, yeah. So, and, and man, the weather outside is not cooperating, Shane. But they are. I know Missouri's done with spring. I don't know why in the hell they go so early, Shane. But the rest of the SEC basically kicked off uh, here this week. So we we got a ton of spring content coming your way. Cousin Shane, I think he's worked harder in his entire podcasting career today to bring uh, to, to work on clips and things of that <laughs> nature. But uh, so, so we'll have that coming at some point, some point very soon here, Shane. But we had... One hell of an idea from from one of the uh, listeners here. So we're, we're going to play it in a minute here, Shane. But we got a voicemail, gave us a show topic for this episode. We're going to be able to hit on all 16 teams like we love to do on this show. But before we get to that, Shane, I don't know if you saw this. This is breaking news. This happened yep. about 10 minutes ago. This is insane, but this is college football here. We're, re we're ready for the insanity. Alabama. Well, former Alabama, Iowa lineman, I guess we got to call him, Caden Proctor. He was the five-star left tackle for Alabama last year, started every mm -hmm. game, jumped in the portal as soon as Nick Saban uh, retired and said, hey, I'm going back to Iowa. He's from Iowa. Who doesn't want to play for Iowa, that exciting <laughs> brand of football they got? Well, apparently he's jumping into portal, Shane. He is allegedly not, not, a, not a done deal just yet, but he's allegedly headed back to Alabama Three oh. transfer, two. I guess two tra two transfers in in a couple of months here. I mean, this is damn wild, isn't it? No, I didn't see that one. Uh, so, so how exactly does that work? So, uh, obviously, the window is closed right now. But is there like uh, some sort of like rescission? <laughs> like, hey, I changed my mind. I can go back, or is is there going to be any type of sitting out here? Is he a is he a graduate transfer? What? How how soon does he get on the field coming back to Alabama? I think it's unlimited transfer, Shane. So I don't think he's got to miss any time. And I mean, they just, uh, I'm trying to think. I think they had a week of spring and then they went on spring break. And, and I think they're coming up on week two of, of spring yeah. down in Alabama. So yeah, that's because apparently he went on spring break with some of his Al former Alabama teammates and said, what the hell am I doing? He must have got some <laughs> of that cold weather up there. They gave him the playbook at Iowa and it was three, you know, it was like NCAA where you just run three plays over and over and over. He, and he's probably said, well, how in the hell is this going to get me to the NFL? So he's <laughs> apparently, again, not, not official that he is back at Alabama, but I think that's the whole point of why he got in the portal. Because he hadn't even, I don't even think he's gone through a single damn practice at Iowa. So I don't know why in the hell he'd be getting in the uh, portal already. Well, I'll tell you why, because it's cold-ass weather. Like you said, Mike, he got outside and he said, hey, it's not 70 degrees out here. I think I'm going back to Tuscaloosa, you know. <laughs> I'm tired of building snowmen. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to Iowa? I mean, it, one of the craziest things, first time I've ever been to Iowa, I've never seen land so flat in my life, brother. I mean, you know, at least in Alabama, <laughs> Georgia areas, you got some hills, some mountains that you get into. But not up there, man. You could stand on a phone book and, and see the next state over, it felt like. So, yeah, he, he, he did the right thing, man. Too many cornfields up there in Iowa. So who's next, Shane? Is Caleb Downs? Is he going to leave Ohio State, come back to Alabama? Fingers crossed that that would be awesome for uh, the Crimson Tide. I, I, I kid, but, hell, if, if this guy's coming back, who he's from, he's from Iowa, Shane. He was committed to right. Iowa, I think, for like a year. Then right on signing day, he said, ah, to hell with this. I'm going to go play real football. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this has been a wild, wild journey. Here. It, 
And it still will be. And, and I, I know there's somebody keeping track with who holds the record for the most transfers. And, uh, you know, this is the move right here, you know, to back in and back out, you know, just like, whoa, I was just kidding, you know. <laughs> it's but probably our guy, uh, JT Daniels. I mean, hell, he's, he must have transferred five, six times. Mike, and this may be the move. I'm not trying to set precedent here. Precedent. Is that how you say that? That's yes, a big sir. word. <laughs> I'm trying to do – that's my one for the day. You know, but go up there, get your NIL money because there's no contracts, and then get the hell out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he, basically, he went to check in the cash, <laughs> got a little, got a little money, and uh, started heading back south with it with his new uh, his new vehicle. So I don't know, I, I don't know the whole story. I'm sure we'll find out or won't find out. But it is it is kind of funny when you think about it. Yeah, I mean and. I mean, I, I know you're just kidding, Shane, but that could be the deal. I mean, they could have said, we're going to give you X amount. Yeah. They bounce a check. He's like, well, I know where, by God, where they got money. And that's yeah. at Alabama. So that, I, again, I have no idea. But it could be, T yeah, uh, Bazu. hope I said that right. He says TJ Finley is definitely on oh, that transfer. Yeah. That was a big one. TJ's what? on that list. He's up there. Yeah. <laughs> Sir UGA says no big words allowed, Cousin Shane. <laughs> <laughs> That's my one. That's my one for the day. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, Shane, let's get to, uh, again, this was a, a fantastic Wait, voice. Real, real yes, quick sir. before we get to it, because this is a good one, but I don't want to overlook the news or noise mm -hmm. of, of, of Florida State and Clemson right now. Oh, right. Um, I, I, I think this is – this may be something, brother. This, this may become something. And I'm just curious on your side. You know, for those that haven't been paying attention, Clemson has now – filed a lawsuit against the ACC. Uh, you know, they're they're trying to get out of this ironclad contract that they've been into. And we've we've done it behind the scenes, but Florida State was the first one in, now Clemson. So those two programs, Mike, if this goes through and they get out of the ACC, you know, there's going to be a choice. You know, SEC will be approached, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But if not, you know damn well the big 30 up there is going to grab them if we don't take them. So are, are, what, what do you think? I just and I know you can't predict the future, but let's just say they are released. Where where do they land? Where do they go? And you're talking just Clemson here, or are you or are you just, saying more teams? I would say Clem. I say if this thing got disbanded, I would say Florida State probably. Uh, you know, North Carolina clearly is 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 a favorite for a lot. I we've talked expansion before, but just these two teams in particular, Clemson and Florida State. Where where do you think they would want to go? Mm, I think. I think they, they want to come to the SEC, clearly. I, I think right. the problem is, does the SEC want them? Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's the bigger question. And I don't – and you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. We, the incentive is to keep the Big Ten out of the South. Right. But I would imagine the Big Ten, they've already made the move to, to California and all that. They don't care about geography. They don't care about tradition. They'll have Florida State playing – UCLA and Southern Cal yeah. on an annual basis. So I think it's more likely if, if we're saying both, I think it's more likely they would join the big 10 Shane. I really do because uh, I don't think the SEC has got any interest in Florida state. I think they would potentially add Clemson to, to go with North Carolina. I yeah. could see that, but I could not see Florida state. Florida state's been offered before they've turned it down. It's, mm -hmm. it's very publicized. And uh, many times, actually, I, I believe they've turned down the SEC. And the last time, Shane, because Florida State turned them down, they they turned around and they took South Carolina. So, I don't know. I, I don't think Florida State, I don't think they've got a future in the SEC. I really don't. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious because this thing's starting to pick up, pick up some speed, you know. And I'm just curious where it lands because some of this stuff happens overnight, you know. Yep, and that's what that's what a lot of people behind the scenes are saying, Shane. It's not going to be two, three years. It's going to be about yeah. six months where all this is going to take place. And they'll probably do it right before the day before kickoff or the upcoming season because it's going to be such a magical season. They're going to distract us all with <laughs> Florida State's joining the uh, the Pac-12 or something like that. You know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know, man. I'm I just curious how it plays out. But just get your thoughts because that's, that's the, the – the knee jerk reaction is that Clemson will be in the SEC. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of with you. I would be in more in favor of a North Carolina or Virginia if we were to pick up another team. But 
Um, I get it. You know, Florida State wasn't that long ago, 99. They were winning national championships not that long ago, Mike, you know. Yeah, it, it's interesting, Shay, because I, I think you're you're being accurate here in saying Virginia. I don't really get the appeal of Virginia, but mm-hmm. I would think more Virginia Tech. I think that make they make yeah. more sense in the SEC than Virginia, but that's just Virginia feels like a Big Ten school if, they, if they're going to add anybody. You know what? Oh, yeah. I mean – Metallica, we're all rocking it down here anyway. You might as well, <laughs> might as well get that fan experience too. So I get behind that. Yeah. Bandy may be a preview to the future, <laughs> the first game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Shane. So let's get it, let's kick it over. Uh, didn't leave a name again. Leave your name if if you want it to be known. If not, you don't have to by any means. But we got a great call on the voicemail line. Uh, I, I, you would think I would have this damn thing memorized by now, Shane. But it is uh, 615-965-5152, and you could call in, you could text in, same number. Nothing changes on, on that end. So uh, give us a ring. Give us a show topic. That's what they, that happened this week or today, Shane, 615-965-5152. So let's kick it over. Really good uh, voicemail here and, and gave us something to talk about today, Shane. Hey, Cousin Shane, SEC Mike. Hey, love y'all show, man. Uh, it makes the day a lot better. Makes the day go by faster. Um, I got two things. Uh, what do you all think is going to be the biggest upset this year in the SEC? Um, I give you mine. I think, uh, Alabama is going to beat Georgia 28-38. And uh, the Kentucky Wildcats, uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest upset on their schedule? Uh, I think it's going to be Texas. I think we're going to beat Texas. Uh, let me know what you all think. And uh, love the show. Keep it going. And uh, hope the best. Love you guys. Shane, Sir UGA what is asking, when is Feinbaum calling in? I, don't hold your breath on that one. I don't think you'd be caught in any time. Yeah. Know? No, no, not yet. But, cuz, this is a great question. And uh, uh, Mike presented it to me yesterday. I've been thinking all night long, man. Uh, you know, I think this is the year that we get – you know, that's one of the things I feel like we've been missing the last couple of seasons is some of those bigger upsets. Right. But with these teams being closer and closer together as far as talent, mm-hmm. uh, man, it's, I, think we have some, I think we have some upsets this season, brother, some big ones. Yeah. Oh, and before we get to that, I, I do want to credit Shane again. Shane's been on fire with the podcast, right. with Fine Keep Bob, it going. with getting clips. <laughs> He's putting out these, uh, the, you know – if anybody follows us, he put out uh, Texas, you know, where will they be in the SEC? Where will Ole Miss be? He's going to be doing that mm-hmm. for all the SEC teams. And uh, he put out one on, on Texas, where Texas will finish blank in the SEC this year. And I said, behind A&M. And by God, Shane, <laughs> I have said it before. I'll say it again. I don't think Texas, these fans are ready for the SEC because they're the <laughs> softest bunch uh, I, in, in the world that I've ever dealt with. They're softer than Florida fans. Mm. But shout out to Sandman, because he, he is a true fan. He's on every one of these damn shows. We do appreciate you. He says, uh, well, I'll, I'll edit this. GD, Mike, why do you keep sucking A&M's dick? And then he says, they've been down for 10 years in a row. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, considering he's a Texas fan. I mean, they won their conference yeah. for the first time in like 19 years, something crazy like that, in a weaker league, no doubt. But having some little fun with that. So we'll we'll talk Texas and Texas A and M at at no length, Shane. But um, I just want to throw that out there that I think I can't believe how soft these Texas people are. Are, are oh, they ready? Yeah, are they yeah, ready for life in the SEC if if that triggers them? Mike, they're gonna have to harden up real quick. That's for sure. Because <laughs> you ask, you poll the, the the fourteen teams that were over here, and probably about ten of them aren't afraid of Texas. Now that may change after five or six years of you beating their ass, right. but until then, it's just it's just noise. And and you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it from everybody. You're gonna get it from every angle every Saturday. And yes, you're you're gonna have some growing pains. You're gonna callous up. 
But just be ready. If you think this is bad, wait till you you jump into one of those vol Twitter traps or South Carolina, you know, mentions. I, I tell you, you can get drugged through the mud real quick uh, when you bring up another SEC fan base. So I yep. love the I love the passion, and uh, that that's that's we're in spring, brother, and we're already getting cranked up. I love it. <laughs> and shout out to uh, cousin Rick. Shady's a big Aggie. He just donated five bucks for me talking trash about. Texas. Now, uh, if a Longhorn gives us six bucks, I'll talk trash about the Aggies. Trust me. So, uh, yeah, we we are whores for that, no doubt. But uh, yeah. l- let's get into it, Shane. Biggest upset here, potential. We we'll go in alphabetical order. Unless right. uh, again, well, start Kentucky because he he did ask for Kentucky. I, I appreciate you calling in. Uh, Mike's got that phone number there at the bottom. So if you've got any other show topics, because you know after spring we're going to hit a little lull. And, uh, and you may be featured on the show, so uh, check that number out. And if you don't want to call, you can text. Uh, we pre- appreciate all the interaction you'll get. Yeah, I'm trying to get back to we, – we're getting a lot of texts, Shane, so I try to get back to every single one of you that texts us in. But, yeah, all, all right, yeah, the caller started with Kentucky. Uh, he's a Kentucky fan, so we can start with them, Shane. Yeah. He said, at Texas. <laughs> now, Ooh. I, I ain't that much of a Texas home, but I, I'm not seeing Kentucky go down to Austin and beating the Longhorns. But that is an interesting one. Let's start there. What, what's your thoughts? Let's let's go like zero out of a hundred. What what's the possibility? Zero, unlikely, a hundred, very likely that Kentucky beats Texas in Austin. And again, he's saying, but he's predicting a big upset here. I, I think he's he's not foolish yeah. enough to say that Kentucky's going to be favored down there. But that would be a stunner. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw up the schedule while we're talking about it here. Yeah, what zero to a hundred? I'm leaning a little more toward. 15, you gotcha. know, yeah. obviously the, I, I think that would be a, a huge, uh, that would be a huge upset, but it is later in the season. So when I look at Kentucky to potentially pull off an upset, mm-hmm. I think you're going to find it a little earlier in the year, Mike. So I don't know which team that you've got picked, but the one that stands out to me is the old Miss Rebels. Ooh, now, on the road. On the road. Not, because again, this is a team that doesn't get the respect. They won't get the respect. They'll because there's a good shot that they're maybe one and three, two and two, even. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I'm not saying they can't get past South Carolina, but coming into Ole Miss, this is a team that, you know, I think about Lane Kiffin, you know, a few years the years that he's been down there, there's been some of these games you're just like, holy shit, why are they why is Tulane hanging in there? Why is Vanderbilt you know, leading at half. You know, there's there's been these games that Ole Miss had no no opportunity to lose, and and then all of a sudden they're playing from behind. So if I'm looking for a, a potential upset, and 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 that's what this is, guys. I'm not saying that Kentucky is going to go out here and beat Ole Miss, but that was more like a trap game to me. And uh, so I'm looking at I'm looking at them on September 28th. Shane, that was masterfully said, but hold on a second here because we just got a $10 donation from Cousin Uh-oh. Joshua who says goodbye to A&M. So he's right, man. Those Aggies Horns suck. up. They never win anything. <laughs> They'll never win anything. Texas is going to win the SEC before A&M. I was a fool for suggesting that A&M will finish higher than Texas. Texas is going to whoop that ass, eat Kyle Field, and them Aggies going to be crying. Now, if anybody wants to give us eleven dollars, I, I may oh, change my tune. But <laughs> yeah, Shane, I, I don't know about that. I I don't yeah. know about oh, adult. I mean, I think Ole Miss is one of the best teams in the country next year. So, I, and again, you the way I'm doing this, Shade, you could go like you did. Like you're, yeah. you're you're predicting upset could mean one of two things. It could mean, and, and I see what you're saying. I mean, maybe they if they beat Ole Miss all the road, certainly that's an upset. But yeah. You can also get upset, and, and so I, I kind of oh. I mix and match my list. I what I really tried to do, Shane, the teams that are at the top, I tried to pick one where they could drop. The teams at the bottom, I tried to look at one they could steal, if if that makes sense. But unfortunately, Shane, and and for our caller here, I went with South Carolina. I I, I cannot emphasize how important this game is for Kentucky's season. If you can't beat South Carolina at home, and you've lost two in a row to them. Mm -hmm. Now, one of those, your quarterback, your starting quarterback was out, so maybe a little asterisk there. But if you can't beat South Carolina at home, you're probably going to get creamed the following week at Georgia, and we're going to be sitting here at one and two 
with the SEC slate right around the corner. So I think that South Carolina game, I don't know what to make of South Carolina right now, but I think that's some potential. And I don't know, quite frankly, Shane, I don't know what to make of Kentucky either. So yeah. that this is a complete toss-up, and I, I think there's real upset potential for both teams, I guess, if you want to call it that. I, I know that's kind of weird to say, but I, I got that South Carolina game circled for Kentucky as one to you really got to watch. And a fun game, you know, that was part of, that was one of my ones that if I was creating the perfect rush of golly, we're just like clowns, ain't we? We're just <laughs> dancing for money. We're, we're like, we're like the opposite of, of strippers, you know? <laughs> yeah. And if you're just listening back, cousin Rick, he just gave us 20 bucks. So I was just kidding when I said Man. Texas would dominate. I mean, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I appreciate you guys, but uh, yeah, we're just having yeah. fun. But yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's 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 going to be Kentucky's be one of good, the hardest teams for me to peg right now. It's just hard. I, I, that's the thing, man. There's just so so many question marks circling around. You know, how, we assume Brock's going to be good, but what if he's not? You know, we assumed the last quarterback came in would be good. We we assumed that. You know, too too many assumptions with with especially the quarterback position and that offensive line. You know, some stuff that there there's some there were some gaping holes that they're trying to repair. But then you got a team like South Carolina that what if goggles is the real deal? You know, right. then all of a sudden he's the equalizer. I get that. I I, I like that pick, Mike. I, I went the optimistic route. You know, the the one that they may potentially win. And uh, the only reason I chose the Ole Miss is just because Lane Kiffin's been caught with his pants down a few times. And and next thing you know, there's there's a team that's playing you closer than they should have. Right. And, hey, since we've given so much uh, Texas and a and uh, talk here, and, and and they're giving us love here, Shane, let's, let's talk upset potential for each one of them, Texas and Texas A&M first. Uh, yeah. let's, let's do Texas. I'm going to throw up the schedule here. And is there one game, because there is one on my docket, but I'm, I'm just kind of curious with you, which way you go with the Longhorns, a potential upset type bid, and, and the caller again, he, he circled that Kentucky game late in the season, next to last, and that, Shane, that is a trap game because there's yeah. going to be so much attention on the return of the Texas A&M Texas game that that could be a, a smart play there. Is there another one that stands out to you? Yeah, and, and again, I I took a different approach here, and I don't think Texas is an underdog in only one game, and so that one is the one that I chose, and that was Georgia coming home uh, October nineteenth. That was going to be. I mean, people are going to be talking about that for a month. Month. They, they're already talking about how big that game could potentially be. This could be two of the best teams in the SEC next year. And Texas has the talent. They have the depth to go toe-to-toe with the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. uh, they knocked off Alabama last year, so why not Georgia this season? So give me the, the, the upset I've got circled. Uh, October 19th, Georgia Bulldogs. Mm. Well, That's an upset. It's an upset again. I I keep putting that little asterisk because there's going to be somebody that clips this to say, yeah, Shane's fat ass said Georgia was going to – no, no, I said it's an upset. And if Texas beats Georgia, that's considered an upset, even though I don't think it's going to be a large point spread between these two teams. Okay. Well, I, I kind of went the different direction again, Shane, because Texas is, is – considered to be one of the best teams in the country, one of the favorites to win the SEC. So I kind of went with a game they could potentially drop. And this is something you you kind of talked me into this in the last episode, Shane, but that trip to Arkansas. Again, yeah. everybody thinks Arkansas's goal suck, yada, yada, yada. They got Bobby Petrino back. I'm hearing great things about their quarterback, Green, the transfer from Boise. They could be a dangerous team, and I think this game means something special to that Arkansas fan base and the Arkansas coaches. So it, it would be very unlikely. I get it. I mean, that's probably a 14-point spread, even though it's in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the one I've got circled after a long grind of the SEC season. I think Arkansas is a potential trap game for the Longhorns. Yeah, you may be right, Mike. You may be right there. The last time we didn't think they were going to win, and 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 they did. So, yeah, there, there's going to be – again, you talk about firing up a rivalry real quick. <laughs> Arkansas knocking off Texas, that thing moved right up the list again. Yeah, and I appreciate you, uh, Cousin Mike Vandegrift. 
Five dollars. Right. How about this? Ole Miss, Tennessee, in the SEC championship pay for pay per view event. I mean, a hundred points scored in that damn game. You know what? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Just keep the defense off the field. We'll just do like those seven on seven tournaments. You know? <laughs> right. All right. So, how about A and M, Shane? Is there one? And let me throw up their schedule real quick here. Is there one you're looking at uh, the Aggies for a potential upset type bid here? Uh, in the Mike Elko debut. Yeah, Mike. Uh, you know, I went round and round on this one because I, A&M, I think, is th- there's an opportunity for them to struggle early. We see this with new coaches that come in. Um, I do think they've got a pretty favorable schedule. Uh, you know, I hope they get past Notre Dame. That one scares me. I'm not going to lie, you know. But I'm trying to be positive and pick an upset, and I truly think that there's a shot – by October 5th, that Missouri will will still be ranked higher than A&M. That's the one I've got on my list because, you know, this these, – these, I don't know. There's just something about the way that one's sitting there. I, I, I saw this a little bit with Mizzou last year, especially during the Florida game. It's like they took their foot off the gas. They, they had – like they knew they had the better team, and and I think that's what's going to get a uh, get Missouri in, in trouble is not just apply just you know come out with with Tennessee and you just whooped their whooped their ass you just kept going kept going but then you took your foot off the gas because it was an inferior opponent and I'm not saying A and M will be A and M's got a lot of talent and they could go toe to toe with you so that one's going to be my upset for uh, for A and M. Turning your Potential back upset. on the Missouri Tigers, Shane. What are we doing here, brother? Uh, now that would be an upset, even though uh, you know it's not totally unrealistic by any means. But it is a home game. That's that's the thing I think most Aggies are fired up about. All these home games, critical home mm-hmm. games for A and M this year. So I, that's why I went with a road game, Shane. That I think Texas A and M could drop and. I know I like to troll this fan base too, Shane. Heck, we did it on TV the other day. But how about the Florida Gators, Shane, at Florida early mm-hmm. in the season, September 14th. It's going to be hotter than hell. It's going to be humid too. You go into the swamp. If Florida can get over Miami in the opener, which I think is somewhat realistic. Yeah. I think if they can do that, they're going to be undefeated. Let's just be 2 0, but still, they'll be undefeated. <laughs> they'll be confident. Coming in here with A and M, who who may lose to Notre Dame in the opener, I don't know, but I I think you you be getting a A and M team that potentially is finding its footing first road game of the season here in Florida. So I, I kind of have it as a big trap game, Texas A and M at Florida. What's your thoughts on that? Well, that's <laughs> hell of a matchup again. Part of my list of, of games to check, and because of that, there's there's a real opportunity here that. Florida either goes down the good path or the bad path, and it goes through College Station there with Texas A&M. Uh, no, wait, it's at home, right? It's is it in Gainesville? It is. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a big reason why I like uh, I like Florida to, to get some momentum. Well, and, and again, momentum is the key, and I think that is pivotal for for Billy Napier and the company is that they just. Just start winning. You know, don't come out here. We don't care what time you go to bed. We don't care about, you know, all the all, all the rigmarole and the, the fancy mottos that you've got hanging around. We don't care. We want to see wins and losses and more wins than losses, which we haven't had here in a while. So, yeah, if they could come out, put put away the Aggies, potentially start out 4-5-0, oh, you mm-hmm. know, then – all of a sudden, you're like, okay, everybody else was wrong. And that's when all those bookmarks, that's why I'm afraid. Every, all that shit I said about the Florida Gators has been bookmarked. And I know it's just by one fan base. So <laughs> <laughs> they, they are ready to attack. <laughs> yeah, Michael Riley says we're going to win nine games, right? He's talking about the Gators. So, I mean, that would be – I don't know if I'd go that bold. But that would make for one hell of a season here. I, I, and that's part of it too, Shane. We're in yeah. year three of Billy Napier. We're in year one of Mike Elko. You have to win these games. You're the Florida yeah. – Gators. This you're supposed yeah. to be SEC contenders by year three. I I don't I think they're a long ways off on that, but you just can't be losing these games. I, I don't think you, you can. Know. You can't. All right. All right, how about Alabama, Shane? Is there is there any that stand out to you with the Crimson Tide? And and again, the caller, he said his biggest per, upset of the season, that Georgia game. It is at home. Both teams yeah. coming off a bye. Uh thoughts on on Alabama. Is there one you've got circled as a potential upset? Yeah, because again, 
I and I, I I went with that one, and I know mm. Georgia's on a couple of these lists here, but but you're coming off a bye. Alabama, Georgia, these are two programs that you know if you've, you've played, and we've known the outcome more times than not. It's it's gone one way, you know, and, right. and it's like to get that. That stigmatism, that to, I don't even know if that's a word. To get that, I've already used my big word for the day, Mike. You know? And here's, here's my thing, Mike. So, Florida. Take Tennessee and Florida. I grew up a Vol fan. The Florida Gators have gone through several coaches. The reason mm-hmm. they've gone through several coaches is because most of them have sucked. Most of them have fell in their face. They've moved on. But I remember games where Muschamp's yelling at the stands up there at Neyland Stadium. Because Why? There was something about it being the Florida Gators, man. There's just something you knew. It didn't matter what the players were. It didn't matter who was coaching the game. It was that logo that sometimes just creeped in the back of your mind saying, well, what if we lose to this team? And I think Alabama, Georgia's kind of on that edge right now. And Alabama has had the upper hand. And if they can find a way to pull off an upset here, they'll maintain that hill. But if they lose it, the tide pun intended, will start turning. So I, that's my upset, man, is Alabama over Georgia Bulldogs. Cousin Hot Rod says Shane needs a thesaurus. Th- 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 uh, now I can't say thesaurus th- 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 <laughs> there. <laughs> I butchered that one. I, I apologize. Oh, but, I know. I promise <laughs> I'm not going to say any more big words. How about it, Shane? I mean, a lot of people are down on Alabama, obviously, with, with all the, the change. Yeah. If they beat Georgia – is that automatically flip? That does that flip the script to where people are saying, "My God, Alabama's still a juggernaut." They're gonna, they're, they're, again, if they beat Georgia, are they the favorite to win the SEC, win the national championship, or will you need to see a little bit more? It, it can't just be a home win over Georgia. What's your thoughts on that? I, I think it, it, if it's done. You know, if it's done early in the season, you can still afford to lose a game or two late and still get into the college football playoff. Uh-huh. But, you know, I think it's it's pivotal for recruiting. It's, it's You know, so if you're in the kid's living room, you're trying to convince them to come to your school, they see that you haven't missed a step even though Nick Saban's not there. So, yeah, I, I'm not saying it's a must win for Alabama, but, man, it would be it'd be monumental for this new regime. Right, but, but I guess what I'm really trying to say, Shane, is there's a lot of people saying eight and four, nine and three, but if you're beating Georgia, you ain't going eight and four. No, you may no. go undefeated. I mean, is that could Alabama be the best team in the country? No, you it, beat. It, I, I to answer your question, if they beat Georgia, they're in the college football playoffs. Like I said, right. they may lose two more games, but they're still going to get in because they'll have that huge signature win at the start of the season. Okay, now now I, here's again, Shane. I'm flipping the script here. I've been picking some potential uh, wins and all that. I see a potential loss here for the Alabama Crimson Tide that I that I think will be considered an upset. And I did this one just for you, buddy. You you may be down. I I can't believe you're already picking Mizzou to lose these games. I pick a Mizzou to potentially win October 26 in Tuscaloosa. I mean, people are starting. Well, I shouldn't say that because it's it seems like some people are coming around to Mizzou being really good. The others are saying seven and five. Eight and four, they suck. <laughs> they got lucky as hell. I, I'm looking at this. You know, Alabama expects to beat the Missouris, the Tennessees, right. the Oklahomas, Wisconsin, all these. They expect to win all these games. So, I mean, ten and two is a down year for an Alabama fan. So, uh, I, I think they just completely overlook Missouri being a matchup that they could potentially lose. I think that's one of their tougher games this year. Well, you're also you're tipping my hand here a little bit, you know. You're you're a little further along than I am. <laughs> Old Debbie Downer getting them getting them losers out of the way. I, I'm all about winning, Mike. So uh, I, I do. I, and I guess well, we'll talk about it, Mike. Coming into that game, <laughs> the reason that I've got Missouri potentially beating Alabama, this is my upset, mm-hmm. is because look at that game placement. You got LSU right around the corner. That's always a big game, always one that you're afraid you're looking ahead. It's sandwiched between Tennessee, which will be on the road, a right. tough environment. And then, you, you know, I get it. It's it's at home. It's Missouri. And in the back of your mind, you're like, this shouldn't be a ball game. 
But what is Alabama's biggest question marks is defensive backs. What is Missouri's biggest strong suit? The damn wide receivers and quarterback play here. So this has potential. This has disaster written all over it. If you're Mike DeBoer and company, how about this, Shane? If now this is kind of crazy talk, but this this is perfect for the off season. If Bama loses at Tennessee, yeah, Mizzou at home, uh huh, and at LSU. Again, un- unlikely they'll drop all these games. I mean, we're si- now we're saying Alabama goes seven five. But if they if they lose all those three games, yeah, they got Mercer at home. The fall. How many Bama fans show up for the Mercer game? Over or under <laughs> forty thousand. It'd be like it'd be like. Um... One of those that they say it's a, a, ever it's sold out, you know. <laughs> but you'll see, you'll see that there's only like 50,000 people there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they get uh, that many if they lost all. Those, Nick Saban you know? starting to he's got boxes. He's bringing his stuff back in his office, you know. <laughs> oh, all shit. right, Shane. How about uh, Arkansas Razorbacks? Let me throw up their schedule real quick. Here's Eric. Is there one on here that you've got circled? A lot of home games. Yeah. On this schedule for the Razorbacks, one game you're circling as a potential upset for them Arkansas Razorbacks. Yeah, I, I, my my thing with Arkansas is they're they're going to be an underdog in a lot of games, but September seventh, right out of the gate, here's a team Ooh. Oklahoma State. They you know played in the in the championship game. They'll probably be a top twenty five program. You know, there's not going to be a lot of respect going in on those Razorbacks, but I think they catch someone off guard here. And uh, Mike Gundy, the mullet, just, just oh, it'd be awesome. It'd be just a, a hell of a tribute to, to kick off the season uh, with a big win there. So week two is the one that I've got penciled in, Mike. Okay, Oklahoma State. And I appreciate your cousin Aaron. He just gave us five bucks, Shane. Happy the Uh-oh. internet bill got paid. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bobby Petrino is going to do great things for them hogs. I say eight wins. Love the show, guys. Appreciate your cousin Aaron. And, hey, I like that, Shane. Again, Oklahoma State, overrated as hell. They they yeah. rack up wins in a weak-ass league. But if yep. Arkansas can steal that one, they, it sets up really well to go 3-0, and to go into conference play. How about this upset one, Shane? I know I just said they could be one of the best teams in the country, but Arkansas plays Ole Miss tough as hell November 2nd. (laughs) I like the upset potential Arkansas facing them Ole Miss Rebels, Shane. And and a big reason why, uh, I'll flip over to Ole Miss schedule real quick. They got Oklahoma, then Arkansas on the road, then Georgia Mm -hmm. at home. I mean, that is a perfect... Trap game situation for them Arkansas Razorbacks. I think Ole Miss. I mean, they they hate – Lane Kiffin, you either love him or you hate him. Yeah. They hate his ass down there <laughs> in Fayetteville. So, uh, I think Ole Miss is one to watch. I I, I know I, I keep saying Ole Miss will be really good. I don't think they're going to go undefeated or anything. They, they And they, they typically will drop a game they're not supposed to. No, absolutely. And I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at it, and again – this is a, a team that I had penciled in last year and was embarrassed. I mean, I, honestly, Mike, that and I felt bad for the fan base because I knew expectations were a lot higher. The pressure's kind of off, even though it's still on Sam, but I think that's a good spot to be. And and now all you got is your locker room, your boys to the left and right, and, and the kids that decided to stay there. They stayed there because – it's Arkansas, and they love them, you know. So I, I, I think that kind of leadership in there is 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 going to just ring through. I think the ad of Bobby Petrino, it was a was probably the best hire in the offseason. Even though on the outside looking in, it's just it, it's you know it was just news. But I, I think this is what Arkansas needs just to get back to what works for them. And uh, yeah, they're going to catch some dudes off guard, man. They're going to win some games. All right, how about Auburn, Shane? Let's uh, look at the Tigers' schedule here. I love looking at pulling up a schedule, Shane, and seeing all these home games because that's how <laughs> you turn it around and you have a big season here. But is there one, and we need to get your ass a tissue over there, is there oh, one man. game that stands out to you with the Auburn Tigers that uh, they could win or, or potentially lose as an upset? 
Everybody started mowing again, Mike. You know, that's the thing. That's the only downside spring, right? So uh, the good news is you'll get some color, you, you know, so you can catch up with me here. But uh, I, I, will, I will go uh, pulling that schedule back up. September 28th is the one that I've got penciled. Um, you know, Auburn, I think, I don't know if it's just Hugh Freeze or – you know, the clips I watched today, it's just like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm starting to get that little, that preseason buzz. You know what I'm saying? And, right. you know, if you knock off Cal and Arkansas and you're sitting there 4-0 and with your last home game being against the Sooners that, you know, are still trying to get acclimated with the SEC play, it, I'm not saying Oklahoma finishes in the top 25, but by God, they're going to start in it. And it's going to be a team like Auburn that could pitch it, potentially knock them off. So, uh, Ward Day of Eagle, that's going to be my, my my fifth game of the week or fifth game of the season, potential upset there. All right, I, I went the other way. I flipped it, Shane, because, again, there are a lot of home games here, mm -hmm. but that stretch in the middle of the year is so brutal at Georgia, mm -hmm. at Mizzou, at Kentucky. And I know I realize there's a bye thrown in there, but also prior to that, I mean, I know everybody's going to be picking them to beat Arkansas, but that's not a gimme, even right. though they whooped Arkansas last year. But here's the – my logic here, Shane, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Georgia on the road, Missouri on the road, at Kentucky. Those are their, you know, five in a row. Uh-huh. I got that Kentucky game circled, brother. October 26, potential upset special. Because I, I think, again, I think Auburn is going to be favored in that game. They're going to be expected to win with that fan base. Yeah. But, again, I don't know what to make of Kentucky, but the way that schedule lines up, I think it, they could be limping into that one, certainly after playing Oklahoma, Georgia, Mizzou. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see how much gas Auburn's got at the end of that. But I think Kentucky could get them there. Yeah, well, I don't. But no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I, I, that game may be more of a coin toss. And, and, and by the time it happens, who knows who's going to be the underdog coming into it. That's, that's my only concern. That's maybe why I didn't even consider that one on the list because there's a shot – Kentucky's not, you know, uh, maybe Kentucky is the favorite or something, you know? Right, and, and hell, I mean, I, I get tired of hyping up Kentucky, so clearly I'm not doing it this year. But you could tell me they go 9-3. and three. Yeah. You could tell me they go 5-7. and seven. You know, like, I, I would believe it. I, I just – I can't put my finger quite on them. But as we sit here and look at these schedules, some of them look pretty winnable to me. I'll just say that. Dude, there's something about it. I don't know what it is. I and I, maybe I do it every year, but there's just I'm I'm starting to buy back into Kentucky love too. I, right. It's it's I the wide receivers. Much, I, I got too much Ollie in me. You know I can't I can't <laughs> pick up and lose all these games. It's all that bourbon that sits behind <laughs> me in my house. You know. <laughs> all right. How about this one, Shay? The most discussed schedule in the entire country in the off season, the Florida Gators. Yeah. Where are you picking the upset for the Gators here? Well, Mike, I, I think September 14th are going to be considered an underdog in that one, and that's mm -hmm. the one I have picked as a potential upset. But I'm not Ooh. I'm not ruling out October 12th either because, <laughs> Mike, I've been on this earth for 41 years, and 36 of them I went into that game expecting to win, <laughs> and majority of the time I was wrong. So there is that little devil on my shoulder says – you know, <laughs> you know it's coming. But uh, I, I chose earlier in the season. I think that A and M win would be would be massive for for Napier and Cup. I can't stress the importance of that football game. So that's the first upset I'm going with for the Gators. Right. Well, and the fact, Shane, that we both went on television and mock the Gators almost assures they are going to yeah. be the breakout candidate in yeah. all of college football. But Come on, man. If if there's one game you got to put your life on that Florida Gators are going to win, regardless of where that damn game's played, you already know. October 12th, brother, at <laughs> Tennessee. I mean, I think there's a real shot. I don't – I've – you know, we had Jake Wimberly on the show. He, yeah. He, he's picking Miami to win the ACC. So, again, I don't have any clue. I don't follow Miami football, but I don't think – I think they're overrated. Right. 1 and 0, Sanford 2 and 0. and I've already picked that as a as a upset potential 3 and 0. At Mississippi State, it ain't going to be easy, but I think you could do it 4 and 0. Central Florida in Gainesville, come on. That's 5 and 0. 
<laughs> I hell, Shade. I mean, if Florida's five and zero oh, coming into Knoxville, I don't think I don't think there's a damn shot that the Gators lose that game. Uh, well, of course. I mean, they got Nico this year, Mike. You know, <laughs> there's always there's always some storyline coming in. There's always reasons why the Florida Gators should not win that game. We know this. We we know it. From this point, Mertz could get hurt right before this game. I'm not saying that he, I hope that happens or anything, but I'm just saying he could come in and then like some third string quarterback comes from nowhere and then all of a sudden he's a Heisman finalist. That's what happens when you play the Tennessee Vol. So uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of that that battered Vol syndrome that they talk about. How about this comment from uh, cousin Dakota Shane? Florida beat Sanford in the upset. <laughs> uh, well, who was it? Uh, as uh, Marler, he said that one was a. He's predicting that one to be a close game. So right, right. Well, it's so I funny because <laughs> with Feinbaum, when when we bashed Florida Gators, it's 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 funny because you could see some of the Florida Gator comments like. He's right, you know. We do deserve better. And then you'd see some that, you know, say something mean, and you're like, man, they don't follow the show because you don't know. <laughs> I just gave that team a, a, a pedestal to, to, to win. So, uh, yeah, we're terrible at gambling, and Gator fans are probably eating it up right now. How about Georgia, Shane? Again, we might have to go a little bit different here because they're, yeah. they're going to be picked to win every damn game here. Uh, the over-unders 10 and a half, of course. Is there is there a game you see for the dogs that uh, – Again, I don't know that we can call any of these uh, uh, upset potential, but mm -hmm. maybe them getting upset. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, man. And this is the one team I don't think is going to be an underdog in any of their games. But right out of the gate, Clemson, August 31st in Atlanta, which you hate yeah. playing at anyway, that, that one – worries me just a little, you know, because you got all these new pieces trying to get acclimated on the offense and defensive side. And, and, you know, how does it gel together? It looks good on paper. It looks good during spring practice, but does it come to fruition out here? Ooh, big word. And, uh, in fall. <laughs> so that's the one I've got, like, if I'm not betting money on right now, even though they should kill Clemson is it's that one right there. Right. Well, Ah, Shane, 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 Shane. I, <laughs> I mean, there's, there, can, there's candidates on here. I mean, the, the original caller, they said Alabama. Yeah. I could see that. Uh, Texas is a popular one. I could see Rock. that. At Ole Miss, I could certainly see that. But here's the deal with Kirby and Georgia, Shane. They get up for these games. I mean, right. these, these are the games they got circled. So I was thinking here, which game would upset me the most if Georgia lost it? And it's the same game you just said, Shane. I can't <laughs> stand losing to Dabo. No. Clips it beats Georgia. Oh, my God, we're going to have to hear about the SEC overrated again. Can't win a non-conference game. George, uh, Clemson's going to skyrocket in the polls, all this, that, yep. and the other. So that, that's exactly where I went. I don't anticipate Georgia will lose that game. I think Georgia probably wins it by about – 28, 35 points, something like crazy like that. But you just never know, Shane, going into a game. A lot of their elite players off to the NFL. That happens every year in Athens, and they replace them. So, again, I don't think they'll get upset in that one, but that's kind of the one I went with as well. <laughs> if it's stock, I want to be selling it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to come out here because there's been some of those games too where Georgia comes out on fire. We look at the Oregon game a few years back. Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, this is this isn't a team you can overlook. And I, I'm afraid a little bit that, hey, this isn't Clemson of four years, five years ago. You know, this is right. – Clemson last year that struggled and we all got to just make fun of them online. So that's that's the clips and we want to continue rolling. And you do that by having the Georgia Bulldogs come out here and just beat the brakes off. But 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 man, there's still that that little back like, well, what if this Georgia team isn't the team? You know, right? All right, Shane. How about uh, LSU? Wild schedule here too. I keep wanting to say Pac-12 teams, but they're Big Ten now. Southern Cal, week one, UCLA, week four. A lot of tricky road games here. It's yeah. two two to three key SEC games at home. Again, just seeing Oklahoma on here is wild. So, I mean, this there's not a schedule quite like this in, in the SEC. Is there one you got circled for them LSU Tigers? 
October 12th, Ole Miss Rebels. Ooh. You know, we've convinced ourselves every year these teams play that this is the year Ole Miss maybe wins, you know, and then every year we're disappointed. So um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going with, with LSU here uh, just because it is a Death Valley. And, again, I'm not saying that they're going to win, but I do think LSU will be the underdog in this thing. So if they can pull off the upset or the win, it would be an upset. So, yeah, Ole Miss – well, I just don't know if that will be an upset. But now I, I certainly could see it, Shane. Yeah. But I think Cousin Jacob nailed it here. That's what I went with. South Carolina. How about it, buddy? Mm. Again, that would be a big <laughs> upset. What, you know, Brian Kelly, hell, he loses every year week one. So <laughs> I'm not saying he better not lose this year week one. But if he does, that's three out of three. So they could be in the hole already. First true road game, williams Bryce night game. We don't know what in the world to make of South Carolina goggles and all, and all this. Maybe he's a star if he is. Yeah. I don't know. I got that game circled, Shane, where I think LSU will be overlooking. It's an automatic win, they're, they're thinking. But I don't think it quite plays out that way. Give me South Carolina. That's a game I think LSU must win that. Otherwise, whew, it's going to be a bad, bad but year. Pull, pull up that that schedule again. Do you think uh, you, they won't? Do you think they'll be underdogs in that USC game? I believe they're favored by, but okay. not by much, by by a point or two. I think. Like if you were picking a, a game that they are going to be upset. Now I know you went South Carolina here, mm-hmm. but truly, Mike, put some money on this thing. Mm-hmm. Are would you? I mean, two years in a row, we've lost season openers against Florida State. Now right. we're going to Vegas to play a, a high-profile team like USC. We yeah. don't know how good they are, but they got talent. Do, is there? Are you worried about that one? Yes, absolutely, Shane. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because, again, we were just so awful on defense. And say what you want about Lincoln Riley. His teams have yeah. no defense. but And, and don't know who the quarterback is going to be or anything like that. But we can count on him at least to have a competent offense. Right. Who's to say LSU's going to be able to stop him? And, and it, you know, you're not going to have the home field advantage. You're not going to have a lot of fame. I, I would imagine there'll, there'll be a good showing, but I don't think it's going to be elite showing by any means. So, yeah, I mean, I, I am very concerned. I, I mean, I technically, I think that's like a, like a toss up, Shane. New yeah. coordinators on both sides of the ball. I don't know what to make of LSU. New quarterback. A lot of change for them Tigers. What, what, are, what are the odds we see uh, it's a Butte down there in Vegas? <laughs> I say it's pretty hot, don't you? <laughs> Hanging out on the sideline. He's already there. He's yeah. there six months ahead of waiting for the game, Shane. He's got his own hotel room up there, man. Yep. <laughs> All right, how about uh, Ole Miss, Shane? Again, this is they may not have a lot that they could be underdogs in because they're, they're going to be yeah. so highly regarded here. But is there a game on here that you could see them pull it upset? Is there a game you could see them getting upset? Where would you go here? Yeah, I, and I think the one that everyone is going to talk about coming into, especially mm-hmm. if they're having a very successful – if they're having a season like you and I think they could have, that Georgia game stands out like a sore thumb. This is a this is a game that they got embarrassed with last year. Right. Coach Kiffin comes out and says, hey, if we want to beat teams like this, we got to recruit like this. And that's exactly what they did. They hit the transfer portal. They loaded up. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to it, but Lane talks about uh, the trenches now. You know, he's in the middle of this Georgia Ole Miss game and realized that they are not the same. Now they're closer. So with that being said, I think if you're going to pick one as a potential upset is a team that basically was built for that game in particular. So uh, give me the Georgia Bulldogs. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's just, you, you almost have to go with that one. If you're saying yeah. who will they upset could be uh, LSU perhaps, but uh, I went the other direction, Shane. I'm going, okay. Oh People going to think I'm, I'm saying 11 and one or something like this. Florida Gators on the road, Shane. <laughs> and I know they got two weeks to prepare, but it'll be after the Georgia game. Yeah. It's before the Egg Bowl. I mean, I think it's this perfect trap game situation. Let's and I played this out in my head, Shane. Let's say Florida's got the star freshman quarterback, DJ Lagway. He's heating up towards the tail end of the season. 
This is how you get the Florida fans excited about 2025. Pull it up sets like this. I don't think you can overlook the swap. And, and hell, even if Florida's struggling, Shane, what's the storyline going to be if Ole Miss is really good? Can you think of it? Ole Miss playing at Florida. What are they going to ask Kiffin about all damn week? Is he going to coach down there? <laughs> hey, you go be the next Florida coach. He had he yeah. loves Steve Spurrier. I mean, this is a distraction city yeah. here, and Lane Kiffin is known for shitting the bed in these big moments. He wanted to beat Nick Saban with every fiber of his being, Shane, and they threw out the biggest egg of the last football season in the SEC. So look at that Florida game late in the season, right before the Egg Bowl, right after Georgia, where all this hype about Ole Miss Georgia, Shane, if Georgia waxes them again, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that, that may eliminate them from the playoff. It may eliminate them from a lot of things. Watch out for that Ole Miss game at Florida. Well, i tell you what, Mike, all this Florida win and stuff, I'm going to need another beer if we keep this up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about uh, yeah. Mississippi State, Shade? You're not staying on script here, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying upsets, right? So basically know, it's like every win Florida gets will be an upset here. But uh, oh, but you know they're going to upset Mississippi. No, I'm just kidding. Mississippi State, Shade, <laughs> is, there, is there one you see for them dogs with Jeff Lebby? First season here, high-flying offense. Game you've got circled, Mississippi State to pull an upset or potentially even get upset. Uh, I got pulling an upset and man, I hate to talk about Florida Gators again, but that was one I was going to go to, but you know what? I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to tap the brakes here a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to shift it back to Texas A&M. Ooh. Um, I, I think a home game here, cowbells are ringing. This is going to be a fun, exciting offense. And I think that's one of the cool things about the style you're going to see here with Levy. Um, they're they're going to be an underdog in just about every game this season, and and I'm not I'm not saying that they can beat a And M, but if they do, it needs to be a team that that they can run some points up on. And how how quick does Elko's defense get acclimated down there? We don't know. So earlier in the season, I'm kind of leaning that way. There's a couple of trap games that Mississippi State could find themselves in. And, uh, and and it's going to be a long season, but I'm just saying, if it were to happen, maybe it's at home against uh, the Aggies. Right, and again, I don't know how many uh, players are left over from the Mike Leach era, Shane, with the portal and, and all this. You yeah. know, two coaching changes, a lot of player change, but Mike Leach really owned Texas A&M. So maybe mm -hmm. Jeff Lebby can bring that back. Maybe there's some confidence going into that football game. But how about this, Shane? You said it. Right there, Mississippi State. We anticipate we're going to have high-flying, fun offense. Yeah. There's one team they're playing, which was just god-awful on defense, Shane, and could have a coach on a hot seat. And can you guess who I'm saying here as I throw up a schedule here? Uh, Florida? Florida Gators, we're doing we should, the other opposite here. You know, we should have just pulled their schedule up first and went through it, Mike. I like Mississippi State to potentially knock off the Florida Gators. I mean, it could be a turmoil, Shane. Florida could have lost to, to uh, Miami. They could have lost to A&M leading up to the – hell, if they lose to Miami and A&M, Florida may not even be favored in this matchup. Yeah. So it, it could be Mississippi State favored in it, but Billy Napier better – he better win down there with them cowbells. Otherwise, they're going to be kicking him to the curb probably by September 22nd. So I'm just keeping my eye on that. I know I've been high on the Gators on this show, but I could see Mississippi State early in the season. They don't have a ton of film on what Mississippi State's going to be doing on offense at this point in time. Right. If it, It's probably going to be a shootout. That's kind of what I'm yeah. seeing here, Shane. I think it's going to be like first to 40 Mississippi State at Florida in Starkville and Hey, it could be a drop pass here, an interception there, a strip sack there. It's probably going to decide that football game. And yeah. give me Mississippi State to pull off a stunner there. Yeah, that, that, that'd that be a big one. And and I don't know if it's more that we don't I, – I keep going back to just – it's just we've been talking about them all show, Mike. It's like – it's almost like a coin toss with them. Like right. I want – 
I see videos and I see players and I and I, I see you know all the beat writers down there and and if you get into it you get into this little bubble and you're like you know I could be convinced that Florida takes a monumental step forward this season I could be convinced of that and then you go to another one and it's like everybody else that's shitting on the Florida Gators are like how are you going to win like the fact that Mississippi State could be a trap game. You know, that's not counting the Mizzou. That's not talking Miami. That's you're saying week four. That that talk right there makes me think. Hey, they may win three games. You know, I keep going <laughs> back and forth. It's it's there will be no middle road, Mike. Either Florida is going to get killed, or they're going to exceed expectations and have seven, maybe eight wins. And that's kind of where I'm at with them. And it's it's. And and it's so funny because I feel like after week one against Miami, we'll know. We'll mm-hmm. know exactly where they're at. Yep. Well, one team I think we know where they're at, Shane. How about Mizzou? You got an upset potential here. Not a lot of games to steal because we think they're going to be so good. But yeah. uh, is there a, a potential upset here? Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Alabama Crimson Tide. I, I, I love, I love the setup here. Even though I, it is at home, Tuscaloosa. Maybe they've had a couple losses. Maybe that home field advantage isn't as extreme as it has been in the past. But coming into that matchup, I like the roster that Mizzou is bringing in compared to the roster that Alabama currently has. It's, it's, it's pro. It's the best versus the weakest part. And now. Alabama's defensive backs, they may surprise us. I mean, they did reload. They got plenty of talent back there, and we may look at that as the, the strongest part of their, their whole team, and that may change. But until then, I think that Mizzou has a real opportunity to punch Alabama in the mouth and punch a ticket to a college football playoff spot. Ooh, I like it to hear that, Sealed Shane. up, sealed up during that week if they can win that one. Now, again, I, I what I – what I went out to do with this one, Shane, teams that are going to be at the top, mm-hmm. I tried to pick, pick one they could trip up on. Right. And I see a trap right here, Shane. October 19th, Auburn Tigers coming off two road games. You got a, a look ahead to Alabama. Again, I, Auburn's one I struggle. I, I don't think Auburn's going to be that good. Uh-huh. But I could be dead wrong, Shane. Year two, Hugh Freeze. Not a lot. I was about to say continuity. They don't have a lot of continuity because they fired about <laughs> half the step. But maybe something clicks for Auburn this year. That's one because I think I think you're right. I think Alabama on the road. That's that is an upset. Yeah. So we could pick that one. But there's not a lot of other upset one. I mean, maybe Oklahoma at home, but I think Missouri's going to be favored there. Mm-hmm. Maybe A and M on the road, but I think even Missouri may be favored there as well. So uh, this this was tough. I'm not feeling very confident about this, but I one where Mizzou could trip up. I could see October 19th if uh, Hugh Freeze, you know, as long as he doesn't spend that week focusing on recruiting, he focuses on game planning and all that. Uh, I think Auburn could sneak yeah. up and get him. Well, and, and, and keeping that running game going, you know, I, that's one thing I think Auburn to have a shot there. Of course, this is this is supposed to be Missouri spot, and we're talking Auburn, but <laughs> if they could pull off one of those run the clocks, you know, kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like what they tried to do a couple of times last year, like against A&M and stuff. Maybe you could play just keep away from this team. Right. But that that's a tough ask because there's so much firepower on the other side of that ball. Yep. All right, how about Oklahoma? <laughs> Is there what on here that you see the suitors pulling an upset or getting upset in their debut season in the SEC? Mike, I do, and it is October 12th against the Texas Longhorns, oh. Mike. I, <laughs> I, I, I think if you look at their schedule, what's really interesting about this one is Texas has Georgia the following week. Yeah. And usually, years past, Oklahoma could never be uh, overlooked. Oklahoma could never be a trap game. Mm-hmm. But, brother – they could be, and that's why I'm saying, you know, the 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 SEC for once is watching this rivalry, and there's a shot that Texas walks away the loser. So, yeah, that's my that's my upset for Oklahoma right now. Well, I'd say Florida, but they're not even on a schedule. <laughs> 
But I again, I, a lot of people discounting the Sooners. They think they're going to be down. How do you get up? Quick, you get respect to the entire nation, Shane. I gave you got two weeks to prepare for at eight Texas. It's oh Alabama late this season, <laughs> right before Alabama plays in the Iron Bowl. Uh, I think that is a potential for the Sooner Shane to stake their flag in the SEC and say, "Hey, we just beat the best of the best over the yeah. last twenty or so years." I, I think everywhere Alabama goes, they're, they're a marked man this year. I, yeah. I really do think that. And, and particularly when they play Oklahoma, who's going to try to get respect. Teams like Missouri, same deal. If, right. if Missouri can, particularly if they win at Alabama, I mean, how in the hell can you discount what Missouri has, has accomplished? You know what I mean? So I, I just think Alabama's going to have that target on their back all season long. And I don't, I think they're going to drop one or two that they're, not expected to. Yeah. Pull, pull, pull up that Oklahoma schedule one more time. I, I was looking at something there. You know, you're got – so I, I said the Texas game. Mm-hmm. And one of the other things that stands out here is after South Carolina, it's Ole Miss, Maine, Mizzou, <laughs> Alabama, and LSU. You know what I'm saying? That is just – to pull off an upset when you got that kind of run is very, very tough to do. So, again, I keep doubling down on the Texas talk here. I, I think I picked a good one here. Mm-hmm. Now, Maine, I'll tell you what, they're, they're <laughs> so damn happy there's a university up there, ain't they? November 2nd, they can finally get a breather. <laughs> uh, all right, how about uh, South Carolina, Shane? Is there one you see the Gamecocks pull it off an upset? Year four, going into Shane Beamer era here. Could you see the Gamecocks pulled off a stoner anywhere here? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think Kentucky. I don't. I don't know if they'll be the underdog in that game, mm-hmm. but uh, I think that one is a. That's such a, an important matchup, September seventh. So it almost feels unfair to call that. So. Maybe I should maybe I should shift off that one. No, nah, I got to go with it. I think <laughs> I, I I just if you're looking for an upset, especially South Carolina, because they have so many moving pieces right now. It's like we don't know what their wide receiver room looks like. You know, we don't know how Rocket Sanders fits in this thing or Sellers. Right. It's like so many, but sometimes that's an advantage early in the season. So a team like Kentucky. I think you could really capitalize on it, potentially in LSU. But uh, I do think that they would be considered an underdog in that game. So give me uh, Big Blue uh, against uh, Kentucky there. And, and one thing, Shane, I don't think enough people have realized, maybe they just have not done the research or what have you. But it, And, again, it, it's kind of hard to – because this is all new. But transfer right. class rankings. Yeah. By I think I don't know if it's on three or twenty four, maybe both of them. But South Carolina's got like a top five transfer class. Yeah. So while they're coming off a down season, people think they suck. People think Beamer's going to get fired. What they may be discounting is the fact all these transfers. And you hit on it there, Rocket coming in. I mean, it it particularly early shape. It could be very mm-hmm. difficult to get a handle on what South Carolina is going to look like all in the field. So that is a potential, a really good one. Shout out to uh, Cousin Wesley, though, real quick. He uh, gave us five bucks. This may be a hot take, but Missouri goes 9-3, and three, loses to Bama, A&M, and Oklahoma. I don't think that's too hot of a take, Shane. I'm not necessarily yeah. saying I, I agree with that, but I could. it's at Bama, it's at A&M, and Oklahoma. We're finding out quick what a rivalry that is, Shane. So <laughs> I don't think 9-3 and three is too unrealistic. I, I expect them to be a little bit better. But uh, but isn't it crazy that that's considered a disappointing season? Right. For, for, to go from where we were at the start Never of last had a year winning to this season one. under drink to last and year, and now nine and three. Holy shit, we didn't make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, man, you talk of pressure is on, man. <laughs> but uh, speaking of pressure, Shane, I get here for for South Carolina. I went a different one than you. I do like that Kentucky. Well, that that's a great yeah. one. But I went. Who knows, Shane? Again, I'm not saying, I'm not guaranteeing this, but two weeks to prepare, Shane. November 2nd, A&M, Waves Bryce Stadium. I think a and is going to be really good this year, but I have been wrong about A&M <laughs> four times that I care to count, Shane. So yep. could they lose late in the year in Columbia? I bet they could. So 
I'm they've done it. That one. <laughs> they have they've done, done it. it. Yeah. So, I, they, what thoughts on that? Do you think South Carolina could beat A and M? Yeah, definitely. I, I think you know Williams Bryce is is very underrated as far as home field advantage. And yeah. depending on how the season starts, you know, if if they can start off on fire, brother, then absolutely, you got a night game. That place comes unglued, and yep. uh, or, or, or maybe a rattled A and M, you know. So I, anything could happen. Technically, this is a rivalry. <laughs> they do play for a trophy <laughs> because they they've been doing that for many years. But uh, I don't think that really matters as much as just being at that stadium in particular, right? All right, how about your vol, Shane? Upset potential, and I know you ain't picking them to lose a game. You're looking at one they could steal. Where are you going with them vols? <sighs> Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an upset, though? I, maybe. I think so. I think people are still going to put them up there and rightfully. I, I, right. I, everybody's kind of shitting on Bama. I, I still think they got a real good shot to end 10-2. and two. Um, mm-hmm. maybe nine and three at the end of the season, which would still be a successful run. Will still be a top fifteen program, probably. Uh, so yeah, I, I think they will be considered underdogs, uh, short of Tennessee just making a, a, a tremendous run up to that point. But you know, when I'm looking at upset on Tennessee's, I, I narrowed it down to Georgia at Georgia or Alabama at home. We've seen it. Not too long ago, so why not see it again? Yeah, give me, uh, give me Bama. Now I went one totally off the board here, Shane. And again, I think Tennessee is going to be really good. So I had to pick one that they'll trip up on that nobody will see coming. They lost the last time they played in this venue, Shane. And and you're right. I mean, people are looking at this schedule. They're saying, "Ooh, Oklahoma, that's tricky." Florida, there's there's demons with the Gators. Yeah, Alabama, we'd love to. Get them two two times in a row in Neyland Stadium. If we could beat Georgia, oh man! I mean, we have turned the corner. These are the games, fan, and, and some of them I'm seeing now are are circling that NC State as a, as a critical game as well. But uh-huh. there's one on there, brother, that no one's talking about. At Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, I that's just the Tennessee way, right? To to be climb that you're, you're trying to beat Georgia, you're trying to beat Alabama, and you're losing on the road in Fayetteville. So I, I think that is that's a tricky, tricky game that yeah. Tennessee's not used to going up there. If Arkansas is a little bit better than anticipated and Tennessee's not as good, I think this is a closer to a 50-50 type ball game. So I'm not outright saying Tennessee's going to lose that Arkansas. If they, if they do, it's going to be a bad year. But that's one I've got circled as a potential upset one. Mm-mm-mm. You bite your tongue, boy. When I, I mean, when I found out they were going to go there, you know, I wanted in on that action. I thought that'd be pretty cool to go down there, check out their new beer garden, and and hang out, drink some cold beer with the fans, and watch a Tennessee win. But now you're saying upset potential. I don't like. I don't like that talk, Michael. Let's go to the next team. Let's go to the next team. All right, last one here, Vanderbilt, Shane. And that's the show. (laughs) (laughs) Where do you see the Commodores potentially getting it upset? Is it Texas? Yeah. No, (laughs) I I, I don't. I I thought. No, I think the upset, your your best shot for an upset is week one, August 31st against Virginia Tech. (laughs) That's that's it, you know, if you're you're thinking upset. But I did want to go one step further and say, hey, which SEC team do I see being like the one that could potentially find their find a loss here? And we just talked about them. I'm looking November 9th, South Carolina, because if this were to happen, if this if this story were to play out, Mike, if the season doesn't work the way South Carolina fans want it to work, and they're sitting there with four or five losses, yeah. you know, there's going to be a lot of – one of the things I've noticed through the years is how quickly that fan base can get deflated, you know, like, oh, shit, we're back to sucking again, you know. <laughs> we just went through October and we have we didn't have a win, all the wins that we expected. So that that's my, my only thing, this being a potential trap game. If you get a scrappy Vanderbilt um, at home there – that, that would be the SEC game if I were to think there's a shot, a way outside shot here. Um, give me the Gamecocks. 
Man, they retired that Cocktober pretty damn quick after yeah. last year. Didn't they? Well, yeah, you saw the schedule this year too, didn't you? So and they're, they're they're loaded up. They got uh, Ole Miss, Alabama, and uh, Oklahoma A and M right there. So look at that long stretch. And then you've got Mizzou, which will probably be a top 10 team on right. November 16th lo- looming. So that November 9th matchup, I don't think it should be tricky. It shouldn't be a ball game, but it could be. Right. Well, Shane, I, I knew that's where you're going. So I just, I pick it a different game just to pick a different game. Yeah. You had the right month. You had the wrong game. Give me Auburn. November 2nd. <laughs> again. I said maybe Auburn will be better, Hugh Freeze year two, but I ain't buying that, to be honest with you. You lose to teams like New Mexico State at home, you can lose right. to Vanderbilt at home. And Vanderbilt, they were so impressed by that New Mexico State quarterback, they added him to the roster, Shane. So, <laughs> I don't know, that guy's got some voodoo on the Auburn Tigers. And, and that's the thing with Auburn, Shane, and, and Hugh Freeze in particular. He'll beat an Alabama, he'll beat a Georgia, and then he turns around and he loses a New Mexico State. He's and, and everybody says with Hugh Free, Shane, he beat Nick Saban twice, but you know what they don't say? He's lost to Vanderbilt twice. So this yeah. is a guy <laughs> that is that gets upset all the time. And, and I, I again, South Carolina makes the most sense, but yeah. I just try to go a little bit different. If Vanderbilt beats Auburn, I will not be stunned. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, Mike, you know. And the fans are pumped up. All all the coaches, I mean, we got videos coming out now of camps. You know, I saw An- Anwar, he you know, he's like, "Look how big these defensive linemen are," you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, look, there's Manning running around in shoulder pads. It's like we're all getting pumped up because our boys are out there. Uh, I absolutely love it. You know, some it's, it's, it's going to be a hell of a run, Mike, and I think we're going to have some upsets. We're going to have some great games this year, brother. And as the conference has grown, so have the, the, the opportunity for mistakes to be made. Right. And, and hey, one, one thing. I, I'm going back to Vanderbilt upset somebody, Shane. Does the next team, next coach in the SEC that mm-hmm. loses to Vanderbilt, if that ever happens again, who knows? But the next time Vanderbilt beats an SEC team, does, does if, whether it's you know Napier or, or Stoops or, or whoever the hell it is, does that team fire their coach that year, do you think? Yeah. That, could you imagine being a team – Let's look at it that, here. I mean, that gets people fired, <laughs> you know. I mean, you don't want to be known as the Grim Reaper, but <laughs> if you're looking, it's going to be late in the season. It's mm-hmm. going to have to be either Shane Beamer mm-hmm. or, I mean, because Kelly and Hoppel, that ain't happening. I don't what even a, see what Hugh Freeze. Stoops, Stoops at home, if he loses to Vanderbilt, we, I, we, may, we may have to give him the ax. A little too early. And that's the only thing. Like if Kentucky was mm-hmm. like November twenty third, I could right. see that. But uh, no, I, I think the the only one that really needs to worry is is South Carolina. Shane mm-hmm. Beamer. Yeah. Well. And I and even then, I don't think he's going to get fired. Uh, you know, one Maybe, thing I did. I, I'm not saying like the next yeah. day. I'm saying like yeah. by the end of the season. I and it's so funny. It's almost like it's not fair. Like we're willing to give Beamer time. We're not willing to give Billy time. But you know, there's we've seen Florida at its greatest. In South Carolina, right. we know that hill's a little bit tougher. It's going to take some growing, but we like what he's doing in the portal. Same thing that they're doing. They're they're both almost similar, but it's just like, what well, Shane will be fine. But Billy, by God, if he loses, <laughs> if he lost to Vanderbilt, he's out of here. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Well, hey, uh, I hope we didn't lose anybody talking. To who are you going to lose to? <laughs> This season here with an upset special, but uh, any thoughts before we jump off? No, no, absolutely great, great time hanging out. Uh, we got some football content. We got coach talk, uh, so we'll probably get to that here in the next day or two. Uh, so, so you're not going to miss any of the spring action. But uh, be sure to have those notifications on on YouTube, and appreciate everybody hanging out with us, all the cousins uh, on the live feed, especially ones sending us some beer money. That that's appreciated. Uh, I'm down to my last two here, so we got to go shopping. (laughs) So uh, thank you all. Yep. I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially those on the live show, for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.
<laughs> All right, see you guys. Go Vols.